Hello, welcome. Today we're going to be testing out how impactful the Soviet Air Force National Spirit is and just a general overview of whether or not this right side really matters. Because this right side is supposed to get rid of basically most of the penalties and you'll end up with a little bit of a bonus. Now the left side, you know, they provide small little bonuses that are nice. A little bit of production cost reduction, a little bit of range, agility, fuel consumption, and then two bonuses. So, you know, you could come down here and you get your bonuses for fighters. But is this right side worth doing? Do you even need to do the left side? Like in multiplayer, you could just steal fighters. You don't actually need to research them ever. You could just use your spy agency and steal them. Important is this to do? Do you need to do them? Because I was playing a multiplayer game on, I think it was Sunday, it might have been Saturday. And I realized during that, that this tool Tip does not update for these penalties. I'm supposed to take an additional 30% penalty to night operations and bad weather. This isn't updating for that. I'm not getting an additional amount. If we increase both those penalties by 30%, that penalty should be 46%, which should put us at 56. That's the test we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing it with Fighter 3s. Uh, we're going to be using 40% reliability and air wings of 1,000. So we'll be able to see if this air accidents chance has any impact either. And at the end, we'll count aces to see if that has any impact. So this is kind of frustrating. You can't actually get them to exactly the same number because you can't get 5% controlled territory for both sides. If I put one to 5.0, the other one goes down to 4.9%. Alrighty. Well, we'll give the slight bonus to the Soviets because... They should be taking a massive penalty, right? That penalty should easily overcome the slight bonus they're getting of 0.1% air detection. So I have managed to set this as permanently night and snowing. One thing I'm also going to do is I'm not going to use centralized control because that gives air mission efficiency. We're going to swap to battlefield air interdiction because it shouldn't do anything. Bad weather does give an air mission efficiency penalty. Centralized control will get rid of that penalty because it's the same percent, 10. They'll just cancel each other out. Alrighty, let's start the test. 10,000 fighters versus 10,000 fighters. We have the same detection, we have the same average air mission efficiency, so I'm just going to let this run for a couple of months and see our losses, because it's going to be snowing the entire time. Okay, so it's been at least half a year now. I don't remember when I started it. It's now December 25th. And within an individual month, we're trading pretty evenly if we just let this run. Our number is very similar to the enemy's numbers. Like, it, it really just depends on where you pause it. The actual shot down in air battle is very similar. If we go to the months tab, about 500 more shot down. In 10,000 versus 10,000 combat, that is very insignificant. It's quite clear we're not taking an additional 30% penalty to our night operations and bad weather. Because we've been doing this entire thing under nighttime and snowing. That should be much larger if we're taking a real 30% penalty. So from that perspective, it's not doing anything. Let's look at the number of aces we generated. According to my count, we have 79 aces. There is a lot of them. So we have lost 1,900 air accidents and we have 79 aces. Let's go. So in this case, we do have 1,200 versus 1,900 accidents. So we are taking more, but I've already shown you guys how to limit air accidents. You just set your air wing to 100 and they just disappear. So in that regard, it doesn't really matter. And now let's check aces. So I count 81. Now, of course, I'm not going to count this multiple times, but I'm counting 81. So if we go back to the Soviets and actually look at their debuffs, they are supposed to have minus 50% ace generation. Not true. Air accidents, plus 75%. I'm showing about a, I'm showing about 60%. Night operations penalty, 30%. Bad weather penalty, 30%. Doesn't show up in the UI. Does not seem to impact these. And then air wing mission experience gain is a little hard, but I'm going to add them all up and I'm going to take the average of their air wings experience. We're also supposed to lose 30% more when we have a plane shot down. So we'll see if that net has any impact. If you hover over your mission efficiency, it also does tell you your air wing experience. I bet you, you didn't know that. So I'm showing 125 average experience. Let's go check the British. Definitely seems like the British have higher XP. 
definitely. Yeah, 162 is the worst I've seen. So we're definitely taking the air wing mission experience gain penalty, which would explain why we were trading poorly towards the end. It's an XP difference. Also, I told you guys I was going to test this guy out. I did as a part of a different test and I left him assigned just to show he does nothing because, well, he doesn't. And neither does half of the stuff. Ace generation doesn't work. Night operations penalty doesn't work. The bad weather penalty doesn't work. Air accidents don't matter. Like the biggest thing is the experience loss. But like, honestly, it's just not worth doing. It really does not matter. This side of the tree just does not really matter at all. Now let me load up the other test I did. And again, the British have the air superiority dude. They're trading evenly. 17,500 versus 17,500. The dude doesn't work. And this penalty for the Soviets doesn't matter either. Anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.